Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel. You may know that computer science is one of the fastest growing careers today, but if you're a student in an underserved group, you may have difficulty accessing the resources you need to pursue that career path. That's where Bits and Bytes comes in. Today, we'll be talking with two local students about the Bits and Bytes chapter they've started in their schools and the skills they're learning, even in this difficult time of COVID. With us today are the co-founders and co-CEOs of the local chapter of Bits and Bytes. We have with us uh, Sarah Kohler and Jalen Patel. Thanks for being with us. Hello, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, You're welcome. You. It's good uh, to see you. So, Jalen, I, I kind of I know you because you've done some volunteer work here at Metro East. And um, Sarah, you're new to me, but you're both very welcome. And I appreciate you being here. Tell me a little bit, if you would, about what attracted you to Bits and Bytes and why you got interested in this organization. Yeah, so I've always been interested in computer science since I was about five years old. Um, and I've learned, pro um, learned programming languages such as Java and Python um, since then using online resources um, and in-school classes. Um, but I realized that a lot of people don't have those resources. And I wanted to provide um, those to underserved students such as them. Um, so that's why, I, um, that's why I personally started Bits and Bytes. That's great. So how about, how about you, Sarah? What, what about this organization um, kind of inspired you to join? Yeah, so, um... I started to work with computer science uh, when I was in uh, junior high or well even I started learning a little bit before uh, using online resources and um, I come from a rural community so computer science classes aren't always available and other resources are oftentimes hard to, harder to find and I realized that uh, this was a thing that was missing in my community and that um, helping students learn about computer science could help them uh, find new opportunities in life. And um, so I actually started working with uh, computer science education on, in uh, 11th grade in high school. Um, and I started the different programming clubs in, uh, locally. But then when COVID came, uh, that all had to be shut down. So I started looking for different alternatives uh, that I could still continue working um, to help bring resources to students, uh, but online. Uh, and yeah, so Bits and, and my work with Bits and Bytes has allowed me to do that. And uh, we're also, we're hoping to like possibly have a mentorship program in uh, our Bits and Bytes chapters so we can continue sharing uh, computer science education with uh, younger students. That would be great. Now, I know COVID has changed everything for, for all nonprofits and, and for really for everybody in one way or another. Do you, when you were in school, did you, and I'm, I'll ask you, Sarah, first, when you were in school, did you feel like uh, that, that students got enough technical training, computer science training? You said you didn't have very much in school. Do you think it's that way for most students? Um, yeah, I think it, it is. Um, now in the high school, we, we have one introductory program class, but that's only for high school and it also <laughs> there's just so many scheduling issues oftentimes I like I haven't had the chance to take that class uh, oh, wow. but then for younger students uh, like learning to program it's like learning any other language is easier when you start when you're younger right. and there weren't any resources in my community for younger students and um, yeah and I hoped to like um, fill that need. Yeah, that's great. And mentoring would be a, a wonderful thing to be able to do. So um, tell me, Jalen, maybe you could tell me a little bit how this works. How, when you got involved, you, you and Sarah became the, the co-founders, the co-CEOs. What did you have to do to get this program started? Yeah, so at the beginning, um, we met each other through um, an online community uh, where we were just looking for co-founders in order to um, start new projects, start new initiatives and organizations um, that we can, you know, make a change in the world. So we all, we all started from there and we came up with a lot of different ideas um, of what we wanted to do, but we ultimately went back to 
um, went back to that we all are, were passionate about computer science and we wanted to inspire others to pursue computer science. So what we did is we started a Slack community. Um, we brought together people from different schools around the world into that community um, and got them like more interested in bits and bytes. And then we recruited staff members. Um, we, uh, we upgraded our community. We made our social media channels and we just went from there. Wow. Wow. It's quite an undertaking. So, uh, and you know that you said, um, or th you said you wanted to help serve underserved students. Um, and, and, and Sarah was talking about mentoring. Are there other kinds of things that you would hope to do in the future for other students or something, other resources you think you'd be able to help them with? Yeah, so I think um, a lot of students, um, you know, uh, right now we don't have like, we have all our resources online and we want some way to be able to um, offer them in person as well. Uh, right now in COVID, um, that is really challenging. So we couldn't do it yet, but we hope to in the future um, actually deliver these courses um, each week um, each, uh, for each module um, in person to people who can't, um, who, don't, don't, who don't have access to it online. Okay, okay. Sarah, can you tell me how, how do you reach out to uh, other students to try to get them involved in this organization? What do you do? Is it, is, I must all be online, I'm sure. Yes, so right now, um, pretty much all of our work has been online mm -hmm. uh, through Slack. Um, like now with the, with the pandemic, so many Slacks and online communities have flourished. So you can always post opportunities there. And as well as our social media, um, we have been working on posting all sorts of updates on our courses and um, like sign of deadlines on our Instagram and that reaches a fairly wide audience. I'm sure it does. Social media is, um, is just kind of the way to go when you want to try to reach a, a large audience. Uh, have you gotten any feedback from any of the students as to how they feel about the program or what they might be getting out of it? Or has, yes, it, been, um, has it been going long enough to make that, that call? Yes, yeah, so, uh, our program has been going uh, since uh, June. So, okay. yeah, I think it was June. Yeah, June. Um, and I have spoken with uh, some of our students. And, uh, well, so, so our courses that, so we offer free online programming courses, and those have been very helpful for our students. Um, even when our students aren't necessarily um, well, doing all the assignments or completing the course, even like the parts of the courses are very helpful. Um, and just bringing the basics of a new programming language uh, and just uh, so they can learn from there. And just the resources that come from the community are very helpful to students overall. What kind of resources do you mean from the community? What would that be? Uh, so uh, f first of all, like the community, uh, there's a lot of networking. Okay. Um, and that, that is a large resource, but also having the support of other people who are learning along with you so that you're not, not alone in the process. Right, that makes sense. So do you think, um, Sarah, do you think this is something that when somebody is applying for a job, when they, you know, maybe whether they're still in high school or college or, um, or after, that this would be something they could put on their resume as, as having you know, additional training in these, uh, have, from having been part of the Bits and Bytes program? Um, yes, I think like once uh, they learn the programming language, then that would be an awesome addition to their yeah. resume. Yeah, it seems like it would be to me too. So um, Jalen, why don't you tell me, what do you personally get out of this? Besides the, you know, the online courses, I mean, it sounds like you both are pretty proficient in computer science. Uh, what, do you get anything else out of it? What about like leadership skills and that kind of thing? Um, yeah, definitely leadership skills, um, problem solving skills. Uh, we always have um, new challenges come up every day, um, whether our, uh, you know, one of our newsletters are, um, are not ready yet, or one of our course, um, our teachers are not ready with their courses yet. We have those problems every day. Um, but most importantly, we just get the joy um, out of teaching students, teaching others, uh, what we have already learned um, in inspiring others to 
um, to pursue computer science. Um, we think it's a very growing and profitable career path and um, it's very important to learn for everyone. So how, what would you say to students who are maybe just starting high school or, or they're still in middle school and they haven't really been exposed very much to computer science? What would you tell them to convince them that this is an important thing for them to learn? Yeah, so whatever career path um, they might consider, um, they're, they might be considering, um, I think the fundamentals of um, just being able to program um, is very important. Not even if you're going to code, but just being able to, um, just being able to uh, learn like technical skills and computer skills um, that is, ex uh, that's extremely important in any, any career. Um, and I think if they, if, if they don't know what they go, if they aren't considering any specific career yet, um, even just exploring new, you know, new ideas, new perspectives is very, um, is a very good way to start as well. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Exposing yourself to a lot of different, you know, career paths, if you don't have something in mind, is, is probably a smart thing to do. Um, for both of you, I'm, I'm curious if you feel like this, is, this experience is helping you prepare for your own personal futures. Really? Um, very much so. Um, I think, well, I really want to pursue CS in college and um, in my career. So I think, you know, the most, like, important I mean, the most like viable way of learning is to is being able to teach others, and I think I think the more and more we have different courses, the more and more we'll we'll be able to teach others, um, and not only that, but I think just this is a great way to create change in the world um, on a global scale, so. That's, that's profound. How about you, Sarah? Do you feel like this is preparing you or helping to prepare you for your future? Yes, uh, definitely. So even though I did not plan to um, major in computer science specifically, um, I like just knowing how to program has helped me a lot. Um, and just like the technical skills are very helpful. And I'm going to science. Uh, but I hope that computer science education will uh, be part of my future still. And I wish to continue to work uh, to bring computer science education and resources to students. That's wonderful. I think both of you are doing a great job and, I, and it's, um, it's commendable. But can I ask what grades both of you are in? I'm a junior in high school. You're a junior? How about you, Sarah? I'm a senior in high school. Senior. Okay, so you'll be going out in the world pretty soon and it won't be that long. So I think this is a, a great thing to have uh, experience doing and, and I commend you for it. Any last things that you'd like our, our viewers to know as you leave? Any last points you wanna make, Sarah? Um, yes, yeah, so um, for everyone who is not sure about the challenges of computer science or just uh, science and math in general, um, well, my advice is just to stick with it, that there's going to be times when it's going to be really hard and there's many confusing concepts out there, but um, as you keep learning, um, things will get easier and at least, at least they'll get more interesting. <laughs> um, and uh, there's always people out there who are willing to help you and will support you on your journey. And I think that's an important thing to know that there's organizations like yours that will, will help. Jalen, any last words? Um, one way they can get involved is to open a chapter in their own high school or college. Um, and this can be done by basically anyone. And if you have no experience in computer science um, or if you don't have leadership experience, uh, we are open to um, anyone um, opening a chapter and you can Find more information on um, the on the pamphlet on the screen, um, as well as um, fill out the form um, to apply in that um, information as well. 
I, I checked that out on the website. It looks very simple. They make it easy. So, uh, and then there'll be people like you and Sarah to help them along if they have questions, I assume, right? Yes. Great. Right. Great. Thank you both of you for, for sharing about Bits and Bytes today um, and keep up the good work. I know it's hard doing everything from home and not being able to, to be at your school, but it seems to me like you've um, taken a good step to making it better. And I think you both have bright futures. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for yeah. your time today. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And to our viewers, thank you for sticking with us today and watching this show. Um, be safe out there, be healthy, and um, help your kids get into computer science. Mm -hmm.